and welcome back into the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Before we get into our second, I mean our fourth segment of the day here, I do want to mention some comments from Andre that we got before the break. When Olave comes back, my receivers are insane. Chase Jefferson and Olave, he would have. And he also was saying, in terms of the Goddard deal, or part of the deal, Delco Craft is on waivers as well if I wanted to drive Goddard for him. I feel like you answer the questions better than me, man. You perhaps pretty proactive in terms of how you think about your team, so I wouldn't necessarily worry about this trade either way. My only concern was, in fact, what was tripping me up was those two guys, Garrett Wilson and Brian Thomas, because who knows? Maybe become all-world players out of these dire situations they're in, and you might regret it, but it's still not one where your team is definitely hurt because of. So I feel like if you're proactive about it, then this trade should potentially go through and could potentially go through and be very beneficial to you and potentially to him as well. But who knows? Now for a fourth thing of the day, we are concluding our positional rankings with the top defenses and special teams this weekend. And I feel about the same way about defenses that I do about tight ends. We're starting to get a clear picture of who each of them are and not for nothing these four defenses are defenses you're probably sick and tired of hearing about week in week out but they are some of the best in the league there are two here that i'm kind of iffy about as honor says my backup receivers are ridley and downs but i was thinking about ridley for juju smith schuster i need the chris trade approval um i feel like you know the trade can go through I feel like this is a trade that could potentially benefit both parties, but on your side of things, from what I've seen, it doesn't necessarily hurt you. So, and besides, you feel like I feel like you have a pretty good contingency plan going forward, and your backup receivers, you don't necessarily need them because of the fact your three starting receivers are some of the best in the league. So, I feel like this trade, I willingly reprove his reject by the way and he sent me the offer so i feel like this trade is approved by me at the very least so you do get the much needed chris trade approval going forward but ultimately you've i feel like you pretty have a pretty good contingency plan going forward but getting back to our defenses and special teams units here all four of these defenses i like but there are two like i said who i'm a little bit iffy on but according to the matchups I feel like they potentially can put up big stats for you as your defense for this week. But starting off with my first defense that I want to mention, how about the Vikings defense going up against the Lions? I feel like, you know, coming off a bye, it's kind of hard to imagine a world where the Vikings defense will look wholly like the one we saw for the first five weeks of the season as and he said he's trying to finesse me a little, but oh, God is going to be out a few weeks. I think it's worth the risk because, like you said, if Tucker Craft is on waivers, then God is the least of your concern. You are still trying to get Jefferson. And I feel like that part of the trade will be papered over anyways because all of your players are going to be in a good position. And you know more about your team potentially than I do. So I feel like this trade, when everyone's healthy, clearly benefits you in a way that, you know, doesn't necessarily help or hurt in any one way or another. So I feel like this trade you should feel comfortable with, even if, you know, you want to keep Goddard, let's say, instead of going for Tucker Craft on waivers. But that's just all my advice. Good luck to you in this trade. I feel like you should go through with it. As he did mention, he just accepted it. So we'll see how it plays out. I wish you the best of luck with that trade. But going back to our defense, he's talking about the Vikings. Like I said, it is kind of risky coming off a bye week to pick a team in the Vikings who have a lot of momentum. But now we're going up against the toughest team they'll, they've probably faced, especially in a divisional encounter. But the thing about the Vikings defense is that it feels like it's well equipped for situations like this at this point. They've already beaten 
very similar offenses in both the 49ers and the Texans. And they've already beaten a divisional opponent. I feel, and as I said, I feel like having Jamar and Jefferson together is just something I can't deny. And that's why, you know, I feel like that part of the trade is what makes it so special. You have two of the best receivers in the league in your wide receiver room. And not for nothing. I feel like even if one of them goes down, God forbid, you still have Chase and Olave, who are two guys, or Jefferson and Olave, who week in, week out, you should rely upon. And it offers you that balance, too. But going back to these defenses here, the Vikings, I feel like this one is one that's a little bit risky, but one I myself can't deny in terms of this matchup. Then going into our next defense, I feel like the Steelers' defense has kind of flown surprisingly under the radar, in my opinion, this year, going up against the Jets. And I feel like, like I said before, the Devontae Adams move, it can go either way, but at least in my opinion, it's not one that really moves me that much just because I feel like it's a slight to players like Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson, and I feel that this move will just create more tension because as much as this Jets team could be all about Aaron Rodgers being happy and getting his buddies back together, Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall proved that they could be franchise cornerstones without him, with even worse quarterback play than you can imagine. And not for nothing, Aaron Rodgers has been pretty bad this season himself at the quarterback position. So it feels kind of weird and unsettling to go out and get Devontae Adams as Andre said, just an unnecessary move in my opinion. I agree. I feel like the Steelers' defense is one that can take advantage of the situation because at this point, I don't know what to think of the Jets with or without Rodgers is honestly it's going to help Wilson, though I believe they cannot double team anymore. I agree with that statement, but I still think that Garrett Wilson won't like the situation either way. So that's why I feel the Steelers can take this advantage in this matchup because they are just a defense who, week in, week out, proves that they are one of, if not the best defense in the league. And I just feel like there are too many question marks around the Jets anyways for me to really fully buy into them with or without uh, Devontae Adams. But then the third defense that I kind of wanted to touch upon is the Rams defense going up against the Raiders coming off the bye week. This is a weird game. And the Rams are one of the two defenses I'm going to mention in this segment that I feel a little less comfortable in starting. But I still feel like in this matchup, they do have the upper hand, and this is a perfect opportunity for this young group to settle in. Because when I think of the Rams' defense, it's not that it's been overall bad and something that can't be improved upon. It's just that these players haven't had that much experience together. They haven't really been in a situation where they can really benefit from having a game like this one, but going forward, I just feel like the Rams' defense is going to get better and better. I like their depth up front with both Verse and Fisk, and I like their back end as well. I like all these guys, and it's just a matter of coming together as Andre agrees in that the defense is so young. Spring chickens, he calls them. I feel like the Rams' defense, not for nothing, is still one that I'm going to appreciate at the year's end. Because even as a Seattle Seahawks fan, as much as I don't want them to succeed, um, I feel like they're just going to grow year in year. I think Verse and Fisk, the sky's the limit for both of them. And I feel like week in, week out, as the schedule potentially lightens up a little bit, we're going to see what this Rams defense is capable of going forward. So I think this Raiders game is a good place to start for them going forward in terms of building that trust, building that rapport, most importantly, getting valuable reps against a team they feel like they compete. As Andre also agrees, I think over time, they can be very good, he says. And I agree completely with that because changing that as 
and I said the pro the league is trying to veto the trade. Well, I feel like either way, whether it doesn't go through or goes through, your team is still good enough to compete in any fantasy football league. So I wouldn't necessarily look into that veto too much, but it is, as he says, it's that really unfair trade. It, it, it kind of is because Jefferson is such a very important player in fantasy, but I still think you can get, you're going to get the trade through. And even if it does get vetoed, then I wouldn't really care that much because your receiver's room, like I said, is stacked. So I feel like either way, it's a win-win for you because your team still is good if you don't get this trade to go through and will be even better if this trade doesn't go through. So... It, it, you have to take your lump sometimes in fantasy week in, week out. But the last defense that I want to go through is actually your defense. As I said, the guy is 2 and 4, no depth though. Well, it is what it is. I feel like when a trade like that comes up, you know, you have to kind of question them a little bit. But I feel like it has to go through. And the league, no matter what, is going to see that. In the end, you know, either way, your team is not going to be overwhelmingly affected outside of the fact your receiver room just gets better. It just makes, you know, a great team an elite team. It's not like it's a completely altering trade either because you're still sending a lot in return, including Laporta. So it is something that you, that, that I feel like will have to go through no matter what. So. I don't think you have to worry about it that much. But then the final defense is actually one you are all too familiar with, my man. Packers going up against the Texans. I actually think that even though it was kind of bashing the Packers' defense yesterday in terms of that matchup between the Texans and the secondary of the Packers, I feel like what I like about this matchup for the Packers is that if, you know, Stroud kind of gets a little uncomfortable, you know, without Nico Collins against a tougher defense than what he faced in New England, then there are opportunities for the Packers to do what they've done this season, and that is generate takeaways. And that adds a lot of value to me from a fantasy perspective, but I can understand why people might be a little apprehensive to start them, because they're a defense that definitely is too reliant on that aspect of their game and going forward i would love to see more of the pass rush getting home but at the end of the day this is kind of one of those matchups where in man-to-man coverage if stroud gets a little bit erratic there's a chance or two for this packers defense to record a couple interceptions so that's why i feel like a lot of value is interesting but let me know what you think in the comments coming up next so to conclude my show we do want to switch over to college football a little bit talk about some of the week eight matchups from a betting perspective to close out today's show we'll be right back after this short break to talk about that 